everyone, Christina here with Burn the Intro Bridge, and you're joining us for our third segment of the four part shirt sew along. That's a mouthful. In this tutorial, we will be opening the neck area of the shirt, setting in the neck gussets, applying the shoulder reinforcements, hemming the bosom slit, and dealing with any bosom slit reinforcement you might want to add and then we will apply the neck band or collar. So grab your pieces and let's get started. The neck gussets that we cut are actually a square, but we want them to end up being two triangles. So let's trim those. The easiest way to do this is by folding in half, giving it a good finger press. And then we'll cut on the fold. And now we have two triangles. We're gonna take one of those triangles, we'll set the other one to the side, and this is going to be the triangle that we're working with on the outside of the shirt. And most neck gussets that we see on the exteriors of shirts, just like with the wristband and neckband, they will have that decorative top stitching. So we want to fold back no more than a quarter of an inch or so on the two legs of the triangle here, not the hypotenuse, we wanna leave that for later, but we'll fold back about a quarter inch or so on the two legs. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did with the wristbands and the neckband. We're going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch or so away from the edge of our fold using a back stitch. And again, you want to try to keep that stitching line straight. You don't have to pull a thread here. You can if you're having a hard time seeing the grain and following along that same thread, but it's not required and you just wanna pick up two to three threads per stitch the whole way down. And if you're unfamiliar with the backstitch, we would recommend that you watch our backstitch tutorial, which is available here on our YouTube channel, and we'll have a link below. And we're going to just keep doing this the whole way down one leg that's been folded back and at the corner we'll pivot and go up the other side. And you have a piece that looks like this. Now when both of your neck gussets are done, you should still have two other little triangles that are hanging out that we haven't done anything with yet. We're gonna set those aside and we will actually use these when we apply the neck gussets to the shirt but not right away. So put these someplace safe where you won't forget about them because we will need them in a couple more steps. The next thing that we are going to need is to grab our body of our shirt. That should be our largest piece. And my shirt is actually folded so that the front and the back are the same. That's not always the case. Sometimes we see the back of the shirt 
uh, maybe a little bit longer than the front. So that is up to you if you would like to stagger your fold or not. I'm not going to stagger my fold today. I'm just going to leave it even uh, for the individual that I'm making this shirt for. But I just wanted you to be aware that that is an option. Once you have folded your shirt to however you would like it to divvy up for front and back, I'm going to finger press that fold into the top. I'm working on a check fabric, so it's very easy for me to make sure that I'm staying on grain. If you are not working on a checked fabric, if you're working on a natural or an unbleached or bleached linen, then you would wanna be really careful about this fold and making sure that everything is staying on grain. You might even pull a thread at this fold just to help you see that because we're gonna be making a cut here to open up our neckline and our bosom slit. And a really quick way to determine where this cut needs to start is to take your shoulder reinforcement, lay it against your fold at the top, lining up your edge to the edge of the fabric, and this is where our shoulder reinforcement will end. And then take one of your neck gussets that have already been hemmed, lay it on top of your reinforcement, bisecting your triangle so that the point is at the top of the fold. And then we're going to cut about a quarter of an inch in front of the point towards the center of the shirt. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that with a pin. That will work on any shirt that you're making, regardless of the size. So if you have your shoulder reinforcement and your neck gusset, you can kind of use that as a trick to make sure you're cutting in the right place. If you're more of a numbers person for this particular pattern, that's gonna be about nine inches in. So you can also measure nine inches in on either side of the shirt at that top fold from the edge, and that will give you the same mark here on your body. Once you've marked those points, we are going to mark the center of the body to be able to cut our bosom slit. So we will take our body, holding it at the fold at the top, match those two points that we just pinned, and then divide to find the center of the body. Finger press that, mark it with another pin, and once we have marked that center point on our body, we will want to drop down and we'll measure for the bosom slit. And bosom slit measurements can vary in the 18th century, but on this shirt, we're going to go with a 10 inch drop from the neckline. So let's go ahead and you can measure this. Just a tape measure is fine. I know. Make sure you're staying on grain. and mark your 10 inches. And now that we have those four points marked, we have our two points at the tops of our shoulders, we have the center point of our shirt, and then we have the depth of our bosom slit, we can now cut open this area on the shirt. Now, I can't tell you how this was done in the 18th century in terms of what snips made first, but what I like to do to help me cut a little bit better is take my center point, remove my pin, slide it so that I'm a little bit off that center fold, and then I'll make a cut a very small cut on my new fold, which is a little bit off from my old fold. And that's because once I straighten this out, where I put the fold back, 
that cut is now directly on my center line for my bosom slit, which means I can then cut up to the fold that I want to be my actual center line. And now I can rotate my shirt and cut the top of the neck without having overcut on other parts of the garment. Insert my scissors in that little slit that I made when I cut slightly off the fold. And now I will cut directly on my fold. Again, if you are working with a pattern that does not have woven checks, it might be best to pull a thread here, or at least be very careful to make sure that you are staying as close to on grain as possible. We're going to cut all the way to our marker. And then we'll do the same thing to our other side. Once you've opened up that top part of the neckline, we're going to come back to the center line, which should have a little nip in it from when we first made that cut. And let's go ahead and keeping your hand behind the fabric so you don't cut through the back of your shirt as well, we'll cut down the bosom slit. So now we have that neckline opened, we have the bosom slit open, so these next two steps are technically interchangeable as to which one you do first. I'm going to recommend that we hem the bosom slit first. So to do that, we're going to turn a very small fold, turning once the whole way down. So maybe an eighth of an inch or so. And then we'll fold it back again. I'm just finger pressing this at the moment. Now when you get to the peak of the cut that we made, you're going to have to grade in that fold and it's gonna get very, very small. And that's okay. So do the best that you can here to get those raw edges enclosed. We will be adding reinforcement to this area of the bosom. So don't worry about this pulling out. We are actually going to be doing something in just a little bit that's gonna help prevent this from ripping. So even if this isn't perfect down here, uh, get it as close as you can, and we'll make sure that we put some reinforcements there to prevent anything from ripping. We'll do the exact same thing to the other side. And once they're folded, we'll go ahead and hem the whole way around the bosom slit before we move on to our next step. We are going to apply this gusset to the neck opening of the shirt. To do that, let's grab our shirt body and we wanna find the opening that we cut near the edge of the shirt that will have our sleeves set in. Take our neck gusset and lay the point a quarter inch in from where we cut the opening. And you can just pin that in place to anchor it down and then simply 
open up the opening, laying the neck gusset on top, just like you see there. And I'll just pin that side in place. And then we can pin the other side as well. You could baste here also. And it might be a little fiddly at the peak and that's okay. You are opening up something that used to be flat and you're giving it some dimension. So a little fiddliness is to be expected. Just do your best to massage it out, give it a little tension and get that pinned in place. Once this is pinned, we are going to fell it down to the shirt body. If you need some practice felling or hemming, feel free to watch our felling and hemming tutorials, which are both linked in the description below, and that will give you a little bit of a refresher. So we'll start at one end of the gusset. And we'll take very small stitches to catch that down. We do want to be mindful when we get to the peak that we are making sure everything is nice and flat, as flat as we can make it. And we'll just continue that stitching around the corner. And there it is. Now we'll do that to the other side. Once our neck gussets are secure, we need to put on our shoulder reinforcements. So let's put our body to the side and take out your shoulder reinforcements. The first thing that we need to do for these is we need to fold the seam allowance back to prep them for application to the body. A lot of these reinforcements in 18th century shirts are actually very, very narrow, sometimes maybe only an inch or so wide. We've been very generous with ours because we know that for many of you joining us, this might be the first time you've ever attempted a shirt. And sometimes working with those smaller pieces and smaller seam allowances can be a little bit intimidating and fiddly. And we wanted this to be an easier process. So when you get to advanced shirt making, you might make these a little narrower and you might turn back the seam allowances a little bit less. But if you are new to shirt making and you're just trying your hand at this, this will be a good size for you to get some practice and let your hands get adjusted to this type of work before you move on to smaller and finer pieces. So the first thing that we're going to do is turn back our seam allowances to the interior of the reinforcement. And on this, I've given you a generous half inch seam allowance. So go ahead and you can finger press this like I'm doing here. You can press it with the iron. But we're gonna turn this back on both sides. All right, so give that a good pressing either with your hands or with the iron. And you could choose to baste your seam allowances back here. I think if you're using a generous seam allowance, we don't need to worry about that so much. If you're using a smaller seam allowance, basting might be a wise decision at this point. But for this tutorial, if you're using our pattern, 
Uh, I don't think basting is necessary. I know you probably can't believe those words just came out of my mouth, but we are going to be basting this to the shirt. So we may not be basting the seam allowances back, but there will still be some basting involved. Just you wait. So we're going to open up the body to the shoulder area with our neck gusset. And it can be a little bit finicky here for a couple of reasons. We have this spot where the gusset joins the body and the body is open to the neck. And that's going to create some wiggliness there because we're taking something that was once a single plane, flat, and we're, we've sliced it and we're spreading it. So that's going to add a little bit of manipulation that has to happen at that point, but it's really not scary, I promise. We're gonna lay this out. And probably the easiest way to do this right now is to find the center point on the shirt. So you can find the line that is your folded center point. And then we're going to match that line up with the line that is the center point for our reinforcement. So if you're like me and you're working with checks, you can do that by looking at the woven lines on the check fabric, finding the center, and then matching the center to the center line on your shirt. If you are not using a check, if you're using a plain linen, you can fold this piece to find center and put a crease in the middle. And you can do the same thing for your body. Just fold your body again, mark that crease, and find center there. We'll just match those centers. And then here, I'm just going to pin the center lines to temporarily hold this in place. And when we get to this peak with the gusset, a couple of things need to happen. We need to make sure that we are keeping the center line true and that we're keeping the fabric as flat as possible so that we don't get any bubbles that we accidentally stitch in. And so once that is aligned, like you see here, what I like to do next is actually baste this piece on before I do my top stitching. This piece is going to be top stitched to the shirt using a back stitch, but I don't like stitching around pins here because the piece is very small. And we also wanna make sure that we don't have too many bubbles or any excess rippling or tension issues in this portion of the garment. So I will baste this on just very quickly. And then we want to do the same thing to the other side as well. Once both sides are basted, we are ready to do our top stitching. We are going to do a back stitch just about an eighth of an inch in from the fold. So on mine, that's going to be nice and easy because it'll be right in the middle of my check. If you are doing this on plain linen, you are more than welcome to pull a thread to mark that channel or just follow the grain line, keeping an even consistency between the fold and your stitching line. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this. We're gonna do that on both sides of the reinforcement, all the way from the edge where the sleeve will be set through to the edge of the neck gusset. And we want this to be equal in size to our wristband and our neckband. So we're taking fairly small stitches, picking up two or three threads per stitch, staying horizontal on that grain line.
Now we're gonna do this for both sides. So let's go ahead and stitch both of our edges on both of our reinforcements before we come back. So we still have our two triangles for our neck gusset that are left over from the pieces that we cut for the outside of the gusset. So we're actually going to take those and prepare them to be put on the interior of our shirt. Just like we did for the exterior neck gussets before we top stitched, we will fold back a quarter of an inch on each leg of our triangle and finger press those. And then once we have that done, let's go ahead and grab our shirt. And we want to apply the gusset to the inside of the shirt. And we're going to do that the same way that we actually applied the gusset to the exterior of the shirt, which is by using a hemming or a felling stitch. And we're just going to, once we've pinned that down, we will hem or fell that gusset just to make sure that that inside area is all finished off and nice and neat. Once we're done putting the gussets onto the interior of our shirt, it is time to prepare to attach the neckband. And we're gonna do this exactly the same way that we put the cuffs on our shirt sleeves, which is by dividing and conquering. So we want to take our shirt and we already have the quarter points coming from the front bosom slit to the center of the shoulder reinforcement. So what we need to find is the center of the back segment of the shirt. We can do that by matching our shoulder reinforcements and then marking with a pin the center back fold. Just like we did when gathering down our shirt sleeve to our wristband where we quartered the sleeve, put in four segments of gathering stitches with that double row of gathering stitch. We're going to do the same thing for our neck opening before we attach the neck band. So let's go ahead and run our double rows of gathering stitches. And when we're done, we'll come back to gather those down. We need to actually quarter our neck band as well. So fold in half, we can mark that with a pin or with a marking thread if you prefer. And then we'll fold in half again to mark our quarters. So now we've got our quarters marked. We have our gathering put into the neck opening of our shirt and we're ready to put these two pieces together. Do make sure you are working on the outside of your shirt and the outside of your neck band at the same time. The last thing you wanna do is put your neck band on inside out. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of that fine stitching on those gathers to attach the neck band, so you don't wanna have to pull all of that out. So just be cautious here that you are working with the right sides of your fabric as appropriate to the section of the shirt that we are working on. So here I have my first quarter of the shirt and I'm going to draw up my first section of gathering. And as you're gathering, you can go ahead and compare that to your quarter mark on your neck band. You can see here I have a little bit more that I need to draw up. So I will draw up a tiny bit more 
and once that length looks good like you see here then we will anchor off our gathering threads when we anchored our threads on our wristbands I just tied the threads off because that is one way that I like to anchor because I don't like working around pins a lot in my sewing however there is another way to anchor your pins. So I do want to show you how to do that as well. You simply put a pin into the fabric and that pin will be perpendicular to your thread and then wrap your thread around the ends of your pin, just like so. And that will give you a pretty good anchor as well. You can leave that in until you're done stitching and then you can pull that pin and pull the thread out pretty easily. So that's one way that you can anchor thread if you would like to use that versus tying off your threads. Now you don't see a whole lot of gathering being done across the net gusset, although there is some gathering that does occur in that part of the garment. However, one place where you might see gathering where we didn't put gathering in our shirt is actually here along the leg of that gusset for the neck opening. So the shirt might actually be gathered all the way to that cut that we made to open the neckline. And then these gathering stitches would actually run underneath the neck gusset and shoulder reinforcement. And we would see gathering continue to this point on the garment. And we didn't do this in our shirt uh, just because it's a little bit more complex in the number of steps, but you could do this if you wanted to. Once you've anchored off your gathering, we are going to begin to attach the neckband. Now this can be done in a couple ways. You can, just like with the wristband, go through and draw all of your gathering stitches down to their appropriate lengths, anchor them off, and then go back and put the neckband on. You can also gather down each section as you go. That is one way that I like to work because it leaves me a little bit of flexibility when I get to that last section of gathering stitches to ease in anything that I might have missed throughout the rest of the garment. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm actually going to Slide my neckband on. And once I've lined everything up to my liking, I'm going to go ahead and just like we did with the wristband, we will attach the neckband by hemming or felling it on to the gathers making sure that we're stitching through each one of those gathers to secure it to the neckband. And remember, as you're going, you can use your needle or a pin or your fingers to gently massage those gathers so that they lay nicely uh, as we're stitching so that they look nice and evenly stacked next to one another. Once you have gathered down all four sections of your neckband and you have attached your neckband on the exterior of the shirt, we will turn the shirt over to the interior. And just as we did on the wristbands, we will now whip down the neckband. So hemming or felling, making sure that you're stitching through each one of those gathers as you attach the neckband on the inside.
And again, do this the whole way around until you finish. And once your neckband is attached, then you are done with part three of this tutorial series. Part four is coming soon. And in part four, we will finish our shirt by attaching sleeves, seaming the body, and doing all of the finicky bits that are left to make your shirt wearable. So until then, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna be notified when part four comes, be sure to subscribe to our channel for notifications of new content, like this video, and leave us a comment below if you feel so inclined. Until next time, happy sewing. Thank you.